Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. So yesterday, <clears throat> there was a marquee game on TNT. And the game was between the Los Angeles Clippers uh, and um, the Minnesota Timberwolves, who were without Carl Anthony Towns. Now, the prior game that the Clippers played, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George did not play. The reason they didn't play, I thought it was because maybe they were injured, but it turned out that the Clippers were playing two games in a 22-hour window. So Ty Lue and the coaching staff said, to hell with that, we're not going to play those guys. But coming into last night's game, Kawhi Leonard was available and all of these guys were available. So what happened? Uh, the, minute, the minute the game started, I noticed something different. I noticed that Kawhi Leonard was start, starting, was guarding <clears throat> um, um, Anthony Edwards at the beginning of the game. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And the Clippers were playing well in that first quarter. They finished the first quarter, I believe, with a 10-point uh, uh, lead. And in the second quarter, they were doing well. So towards the second half, <clears throat> I noticed two things. I was like, well, they're leading the game. And I noticed Kawhi Leonard didn't return to the game. But I'm like, they're already up. It's pretty late where I am. So I'm just going to go to bed. So I went to bed. Uh, and then I woke up this morning and I saw that the Minnesota Timberwolves won the game. And I was like, OK, well, I'm not really surprised here, given the fact that the Clippers have been shaky since uh, All-Star break. Right. They've been very shaky going into All-Star break. They won the best 30 game stretch of any team in the NBA. And since then, they have been really, really, really shaky. So that break uh, really seemed to hurt them in terms of their continuity, their rhythm, etc. So they lost the game. But then. <clears throat> As I was kind of catching up with the news this morning, I then came across some information that it turns out Kawhi Leonard actually got injured in that game in the second quarter. And it was the reason he didn't return. And I was like, wait a minute, this is strange because I'm like, why isn't he playing? And I, and I figured something was up, but I didn't have any solid information. But as it turns out, Kawhi Leonard did get injured. And I want to read today from SI.com. So let me get into this article here. It says Kawhi Leonard injury update during Clippers versus Timberwolves. Kawhi Leonard, LA Clippers star Kawhi Leonard left Tuesday's night game versus the Timberwolves. It continues on. Uh, LA Clippers star Kawhi Leonard left Tuesday night's game with, versus the Minnesota Timberwolves with what the team is calling thoracic uh, spasms. Leonard was seen on the TNT broadcast leaving the, uh, leaving the arena in street clothes, which of course indicated that he would not return. Prior to the start of the second half, the Clippers announced that the star fort is dealing with thoracic spasms. Leonard has been very durable for the Clippers this season and ha and has his co-star, uh, Paul George. The two-star two forwards have been able to avoid any extended injury absences up until this point uh, in the season. There is no timetable yet for Leonard's injury, and this diagnosis is still very early. So that's what that article uh, had to say there. Let me get into what I think about this news. First of all, I don't think this is going to be a very big thing. I think Kawhi Leonard is going to return back and things are going to be fine in terms of his inju injury, although it's pretty um, devastating. And that's the reason we wrote it in the title, because of the seating, right? Right now is a pretty tight, tight race at the top of the conference. I'll say the first uh, five seeds uh, are still in the position to move around a lot. So from that aspect, uh, it's, it's, it's devastating news because you want your best player on the court to be available to play these games and to establish continuity going into the playoffs. But I believe Kawhi Leonard will probably be back Worst case scenario, he probably misses a week uh, of games or maybe two. Who knows? Um, so that's that aspect. The, the the other part that I really want to hone in on is the way the Clippers have been playing since the All-Star break. The Clippers have not looked good. They had an impressive win against the Minnesota Timberwolves, and I believe Carl Anthony Towns was in that game. They beat them by one point. It was very, very uh, impressive the way they executed down the stretch. I think they beat them in that game one by 1.89, 88 or something uh, to that effect. It was a fantastic game. I enjoyed watching it. Um, but overall, they haven't been playing well. A lot of these games have been getting down pretty early uh, and then coming back <clears throat> and winning those games. That's certainly what they did against the Houston Rockets. Um, and they're not showing me that championship kind of uh, uh, medal that I would be looking for a team heading into the playoffs. Uh, as of right now, I don't think they're a team that can come out of the Western Conference, given how they're playing at this present moment. Things can change. Obviously, we still have some time. Uh, obviously, when they acquire... James Harden, they had a rough period, about a seven game window when they didn't play well, but ultimately they were able to self-correct and then they went on that tier. So we have seen this team play very well. My biggest concern beyond the injury is how the team is playing uh, and the continuity uh, that they have. They've been lethargic 
to put it kindly since the all-star break and i would like to see the clippers pick up their energy pick up their urgency or maybe they just listen hey we're biding our time we don't want to over uh, exert ourselves too soon and maybe start to ramp things up closer to the playoffs as of now um i think that Kawhi Leonard's absent will have an effect on the team um, in terms of the seating and now we got to look in the direction of paul george to really step up um paul george i have been shaky on him in terms of my uh, uh sentiments about how he's been playing this season there's been some games has been sensational but overall um i would like to really see him pick up that load uh especially now that Kawhi leonard is out you still have two all-star players in paul george and James Harden. So they still should be competitive. They certainly were competitive up until a certain point against the Milwaukee Bucks with Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo. So with Paul George back in the lineup and in that game, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard did not play. I still think this team should be competitive. They have a very deep roster with Coffey, uh, 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 Norman Powell, <clears throat> Um, Bones Highland and so many other players, although they're missing Russell Westbrook. So I still expect this team to be competitive and they better be competitive because there's going to be a lot of moving that's taking place in that Western Conference. And the Clippers, I think, need to assure that they are at least a top four seed in the Western Conference uh, heading into the playoffs because things can move around and there are a lot of dangerous teams in the West. And I think a team that a lot of people are not talking about enough and Jamal Crawford brought it up yesterday is the Phoenix Suns. They're going to be a tough out. They're going to be absolutely a tough out because they have a powerhouse offense uh, over there with Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, and uh, Devin Booker. So let, let me just go ahead and get into this topic. Let me first of all start off by saying I'm enjoying uh, this. We are done with the 90s uh, thing right now. We are at war and I'm enjoying every moment, of, every moment of it. I'm glad that Dreamers Pro is in the mix and we're one of the channels out there duking it out with the rest of these channels out there and these people out there twerking it up, you know, shaking it up all over the place, slapping each other. Well, honey, I'm, I'm happy that we're here to see all of it. And I'm here for all. I am here for all of the smoke, all of it. Count me in. Count me in. I'm, I'm, I'm here for uh, for all of it. So this we're done with the 90s seems to be something that started to grow some legs and now it's making its way into <clears throat> the mainstream why am i saying this because yesterday i saw a few shows from the odd couple featuring rob parker and uh chris broussard and they were discussing this one episode they discussed it um i forgot what the gentleman who they discussed it with they were saying it was rob parker's relative i've heard him before i just can't remember his name right now and in the second episode they were reacting to some comments that uh nba uh, legend laker legend shaquille o'neal had to make in response to this news when he when he was talking about it on the big podcast so that's essentially uh the backdrop to what was taking place in the conversation so after shaq they played the shaq audio and uh rob parker responded to it chris broussard then proceeded to systematically uh uh systematically uh obliterate there's, there's another word I'm looking for. I just can't come to my mind. S systematically just pick these guys, surgically remove every single idiotic argument. So what we want to do is we want to play exactly what Chris Broussard had to say as he systematically broke down this entire debate. I want you guys to listen to every second of what he had to say because I believe he put out some pertinent information out there. So we're going to play it for you now, but I'm going to come back and give you guys our thoughts and really get into the show. Take a listen to what Chris, Chris Broussard had to say here. There is Shaq is right. And when you look back at the 90s, the first thing you will notice, it will be eye-popping, is that the game was played so close to the paint. The game was virtually right around the painted area, okay? And now it is incredibly spread out. That's the first thing you'll notice. It looks like a different game in that respect. So there's that. Secondly, the players today are, by and large, I would say more athletic. That doesn't mean, you know, anybody necessarily is more athletic than Michael Jordan or than Dominique Wilkins, or Clyde Drexler, some of the, the super athletes of that era. But it mean, I think more players are athletic, again, what we describe as athleticism right now, than were in the 90s, period. Okay? The ball handling is better, in part because they let you carry. You just do. Thank I, you, it Chris. Just, Right, I mean, when, when I grew up and I played basketball through college, 
You were taught to have your hand on top of the ball. At times, you obviously have it a little on the side, but you had that. You pretty much had it on top of the ball. You can't do the things with the ball when your hands on top of it that you can do when it's on the side all the time and dart half the time under the ball. All right, so that that is in part why the ball handling is so much or is better. The shooting is interesting. Obviously, I mean, what people will point to is that the young kids, well, the three, they shoot so much better. They actually don't. They just shoot it more. Right. Three-point percentage is similar to what it was. Like, it league-wide, three-point percentage is 36.7 right now. In 2013-14, it was 36%. In 2008 and 9, it was 36.7. In uh, 2001-02, it was 35.4. All right, 2000-96-97, now I think that might have been, those might have been the years where they had the shorter line. It was 36%. But my point is, it's very close. It's, it's, a, it's hovered around 35%. But, but they stand on this idea of skilled. Chris, like well, like, the skill, like I said, no. ball handling is is different because they're carrying right. The shooting, if guys, what they figured out, and for those that don't know, most some people may know this, a lot don't, right? And it's amazing that it did take people so long to figure this out, because <laughs> what the analytics people realized at some point was, you know what? Because Rob, fifty percent shooting from the field was the standard. Like, if you do that, that's excellent. That, right. Especially for a perimeter player, a guard, that's excellent. Um, that's what you were you were shooting a pretty good percentage if you shot 50% from two. What the analytics people figured out was, well, if you shoot 33% from three, that's the equivalent of 50% of 50 from two. And we can shoot better than 33%. We can shoot 34, 35%. 36%. Right. So that is, we should just keep doing that instead of going for these twos. And they figured that out, and that is what sparked the three-point revolution. I Again, obviously you got power forwards and centers even shooting threes. But my point is the guy, the shooters back then could shoot just as well because the percentages are pretty similar. They just didn't shoot as much, didn't shoot a lot of them. And, and here's the ultimate thing, Rob. I, I believe that while I give today's players advantages in certain ways, I also think they're disadvantaged in certain ways. They're not as fundamentally sound in terms of playing team basketball. I mean five-player basketball, not just high pick and roll, which is two-man ball, or ISO, one-man ball. You know, and you do what you can, and if you can't get a shot, you kick it out to a teammate. That's what today's American players are are being raised in. Whereas it used to be, and this includes Michael Jordan and his generation, they were raised playing five man basketball, moving without the. Luka Doncic can't move without the basketball. And I don't know he's not American, but he doesn't know what to do with it unless the ball's in his hands. All right, and the players of back in the day. Would Michael Jordan would move without the ball, set some screens. They knew how to make post-entry passes. They knew how to guard the post. They had post moves. Those are the things I'm talking about when I say the fundamentals aren't where they used to be. And so I would tell you that while the players today are more athletic, have better handles, again, carrying, but still, the teams of the 90s could play with these teams and beat them at time. It'd be, it, I think it'd be just as good because they played five-man basketball, whereas today they're just playing pick and roll, two-man, Every the other three guys spread the floor and I'll kick it to you, or one-man basketball. I'm going to create one-on-one -on -one and kick it to you if I can't get anything. That's easier to guard. It's easier to stop. And, Rob, if you look at the teams that – just say gave LeBron trouble. The Spurs, why? They played five-man team basketball. The Warriors, why? They played five-man team basketball. 
What is Denver doing now? Five-man team basketball. Denver is not the most talented team in the world. No. You should look. And that's the thing. You can look at Jokic, Luka, Steph, James Harden. They're, none of them are what we call athletic today. Yep. You know, by today's NBA standards. But they're skilled. And, and I don't mean just ball handling skill. I mean skilled. And the players in the 90s were skilled and could play with these guys. So that's kind of my breakdown of it. Um, you know, when yeah. you, and, and the memes, Rob, I could take I could take bad plays from LeBron. I could take bad plays from Jordan. I could take bad plays from you, Luca, and make it look like these dudes don't know what they're doing. So you heard what Chris Bruce Hart had to say. Uh, I would like to join and participate in the jokes. He broke it down to a, to, a, to a molecular level. Let me add in my own two cents. We keep talking about how great this era is and how you're done with the 90s. And I think that the people that did this, that started this, are the Gilbert Arenas of the world, are the LeBron James fans. This is this is all. And they're trying to distract us from this Balco situation. But they brought this nonsense up. The problem is they picked a ridiculous thing to even d d debate on. Are we really going to sit down here and say that we done with the 90s? Are we really going to say that Michael Jordan can't go left? Is, is this is this is this what you guys have resorted to? So now I, I started noticing other other people, other creators out there like sports and fitness rants, uh, scalp attack started doing shows that we're done with the 2010s too raw for uh, what is it too raw for sports and others. They've been talking about we're done with the 2000 and, oh, excuse me, the 2020s. Right. So as people, all these people are going back and forth yesterday, something dawned on me. And I posted something on the channel that I want to, not a lot of channel, uh, on the community section about 10 hours ago. It has about 312 comments with about 800, uh, 870 likes. And it said, and I said the following, I said, let's not forget this. is uh, This is the era that couldn't even win the bronze in the FIBA games. Laughing my MF and ass off. We done with the 2020 trash ass players. They couldn't even get a medal. Throw this entire era in the garbage. That's what I said. And when I put up that post, it turns out that hadn't occurred to a lot of people. They knew the information, obviously, but they forgot about it. So help me figure this out. You're done with the 90s. What era 90, 90s players ever lost in any of this international competition? Uh, none. That never happened, right? But this era, with the most skilled basketball players, with the most athletic basketball players that we have ever seen, the most advanced set of players the NBA has ever produced, went into the international games and got their asses whizzapped. They got their asses handed to them. It got so bad that you know what they did? You know what they did? They were like, we're going to go back and get players that came into the NBA 10 to 15 years ago. We need to go get LeBron. We need to go get Kevin Durant. We need to go get Stephen Curry. We need to go get all of these guys to come help us beat the international players because we can't do it. But this is the era you dudes want to convince us is better than the night. Are you? Uh, of course they're kidding. I was about to say, are you kidding me? Of course they're kidding. I think the only people that are adults pushing, pushing this argument are grown ass men trying to appeal to a younger audience. And this is the problem. This is, uh, let me see if I can find uh, the gentleman that said this. I want to see because he brought up a very, very interesting uh, and yet um, important point. I want to I want to see if I can find the gentleman's name because he, okay, Fox Sports Radio, here it is here. Let me see. Uh, what is his name? Because I saw this show yesterday. Vincent Goodwill. Vincent Goodwill. That's his name. He brought up a bit. He brought up a very, very important point on the odd couple yesterday, which is this. This is beyond just we're done with the 90s. This is a bigger societal issue that we're facing. Listen, folks, the fact of the matter is the following. This present generation that we're in is full of the most disrespectful crop of citizens to ever walk on the planet. That's number one. Number two, and I think one of the major keys is driving this type of, uh, in, uh, that's actually uh, uh, um, um, giving life to this environment, is the men. This goes back to men. 
What am I talking about? You see, what has happened is you have men in their 30s, mid 30s, 40s that want to be 18 years old. They want to be 23 years old. They want to be 25 year olds. So what do they do? They know they can't be 25 year olds. They know they can't be 18 year olds. So what do they do? They start saying things that the young boys want to hear so they will accept them, which to me is crazy. So they're, 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 they're backing up these younger guys in their nonsense and supporting them, even though they know it's not true because they want to latch onto their wave and ride it out with the young boys. Everybody's running away from their age group. You got the young guys that are the young guys and you got some older guys that want to be young guys. This is the problem. How can you be 40 years old talking about old players in the past? Son, you old too. What are you talking about? What are you, what are you even on right now? How you diss your own era? How you play yourself so the young boys will like you? This is the problem that I'm noticing. Some of these cats be running up on running up on me with these nasty ass comments talking about, oh, you old son, I'm 36 years old. First of all, if that make me old, then I don't know what a 90 year old is. But anyway, if that make me if that's supposed to make me feel some type of way, you must be bugging. I love being my age. I don't want to be 18. I don't want to be 22. I don't want to be 26. I want to be my age. It's called being cool in your skin. If I got a gray pop up here, y'all going to see it. If I got another great pop up here, y'all going to see it. Trust and believe. I'm not trying to be, oh, I'm this. I don't care about none of that. All the men with real money are the ones in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s anyway. So what I want to be young and broke, man, y'all can keep that and undecided. So the young, the older guys are supposed to be the ones showing the younger guys how to how the game go. But they don't. They trying to rock out with them. So you have dudes in their 40s, 45, talking about, yeah, the 90s are trash. Yeah, they're trash. But they know they're capping. They know they're capping. This is, the, this is the main driver of it. So when you have older guys acting like young boys, where are the checks and balances in society? They don't exist. This is why you can go to certain places and see adults acting like children. This is the fundamental problem that we're facing as a society. So if the young guys are saying this, cool. That's what they believe. But when you got older cats trying to be with them, like, no, y'all, yo. Anyway, y'all, y'all be cool with it. I'm cool in my skin. I'm not trying to be something I'm not. I'm 100 percent cool in my skin. Y'all can keep twerking it up for these younger, younger generation uh, guys. Because at the end of the day, they still gonna be laughing at your old ass anyway, according to they still gonna be like, yo, son, they're gonna, they, they gonna talk to you, but after you leave, like, yo, why his old ass always here with us? Why doesn't he go hang out with people in his own age group? That's what they're gonna say. This is, I mean, I'm just keeping it funky with you. If I'm if I'm 35, you're not gonna see me hanging around with a bunch of 25 year. I'm sorry. Not that I got nothing against them, but they're not my age group. We're in a different point of life, we have a different conversation. And that's the problem. Some of these older guys want to be young boys. The new thing right now that people want to talk about is this damn we done with the 90s. I couldn't. Uh, folks, it has gotten to this point. It has gotten to this point that the golden era of the NBA, you got some of these guys running around TikTokers running around all over the place talking about we done with the 90s. It has gotten to that point. The era that couldn't even win a bronze medal in the FIBA games is the era talking about we done with the 90s. I, you, 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 you simply cannot make any of this up. So you've had some people in media like Gilbert Arenas and others have been trying to say, oh, this is the best era and blah, 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 which I don't believe. And I don't believe Gilbert Arenas believes what he says. And I've told him, I said, Gilbert, I don't believe you believe a single word that you're saying. I just think you're pandering to these young guys. I don't believe it. I refuse to believe it. Makes no sense. Uh, right. But nevertheless, these guys have been trying to say this and say that. And now they're trying to talk about we're done with the 90s to discredit the Jordan era. So the question then becomes, if you're done with the 90s, what era are we actually like? What era are we on the 80s? Well, I know you're not going to say that. What is it? The two. So what is it? The 2020s? Well, is that what you're talking about? Well, it turns out the most skilled player in NBA history, in my view and the view of many, uh, Kobe Bryant uh, had some audios in the past and things to say about this era with these LeBron fans because they're the ones pushing it. 
where he totally exposes these guys and exposes this era for peddling this madness that they're trying to peddle right now. So what we want to do is we want to play a little bit of what Kobe Bryant thinks about this current era of NBA players and their skill level. Take a listen to what Kobe had to say here. Kobe, you've been pretty critical of the AAU system and the way American players are brought up. Not pretty critical. I'm extremely critical. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah, because it doesn't teach our players how to play the right way. You know, how to think the game, how to play in combinations of threes. And I think everything is a, you know, it's a reward system. I think uh, you know, the coaches who are you know, teaching the game are getting rewarded in one fashion or another. And um, it's just a showcase. Do you feel like it's the, absolutely yeah, horrible for the game. The young guys that are coming up, do you feel like the game is kind of stiff, whereas when your guys were more skilled? Yeah, but I think that was just by luck in the generation that I grew up in. You know what I mean? Because like my generation is when the AU basketball really started becoming <laughs> You know, and I, I got lucky because I grew up in Europe. Right. And, you know, everything there was still fundamental. So I learned all the basics. And I think we're doing a tremendous disservice to our young basketball players right now. And that's something that definitely needs to be fixed. And it's going to be one of the things that I definitely focus on. What are you seeing when you watch today's game? We got issues where we're questioning guys getting rest, taking rest, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, what do you see Super when you watch changing. today's game? Well, I mean, listen, the, the, the game has grown substantially. The age of social media has really altered uh, or grown the amount of opinions that we have available to the game. So as a, as a result, you have a wide ranging opinion on one issue. Uh, which is fine, but I think at the core of it all is the game itself. So if players are continuing to get better, that's what's most important. Now, in terms of uh, uh, the development of players, I feel like that has completely gone backwards, and it starts at a very, very uh, at the youth level and growing up through AAU and so forth and so on. We're not teaching our kids the fundamentals of the game. We're not teaching them how to think the game, and uh, that's a bigger issue. All the other things that surround the game will come and go, uh, but the game itself. Is the most Kobe, is that really a bigger issue, or, or are you as an outlier? Like, you had a very well-rounded game, but yeah. not everyone did. There were a lot of bums compared to you then, just as there are now compared to the best players. Are you the old-timer now looking back and going, in my day, everyone knew the game. That was just you, or do you really think it's gone backwards in that way? No, it has. I mean, it, you know, our development in USA basketball, you can, you can just look at that on the surface and the difficulty and the challenges that we face in playing international competitions. So when I grew up and growing up overseas in Italy, I was very fortunate because I caught the teaching time in Europe. So, you know, the Red Holtzmans, the Tex Winners, and all these great coaches at the time went over to Europe to teach coaches, have coaching, coaching clinics of how to train players. So when I was growing up, I caught the fundamentals of that game, right? Pau Gasol, Manu Ginobili, you know, same thing. And so you look at our, the difficulty that we have had in international competition is because these players learn how to play the game and think the game at all levels. Pau Gasol, just as comfortable handling the ball as he is in the post. Marc Gasol, right? You look at San Antonio Spurs and the way that they move the ball. Um, and so we have to do a better job you, developing you, our players. You, so you heard what Kobe Bryant had to say. He broke it down to a molecular level for you guys. Now who are you going to listen to? What an NBA player y'all gonna listen to talk basketball over Kobe? Who's the guy? Who? Who's the guy in media right now you're gonna listen to? Who? There's nobody. Literally. There's nobody I would rather listen to talk about basketball than Kobe Bryant. Because first of all, Kobe Bryant was a very intelligent uh, person. Number two, he could explain things very clearly. And number three, he was very, very observant. So that's what Kobe had to say about the current skill level of where we are in the NBA right now. But it didn't stop there. Kobe also took it a step further when he was talking to Quentin Richardson, when he was talking about the lack of competitiveness that we see in NBA players today, and this was this has been exhibited over the last two All-Star games. So for those of you who didn't hear what Kobe Bryant thinks about the competitive spirit of modern NBA players today, want to play what Kobe Bryant had to say for you here. I want you guys to listen to it carefully, and then we're going to come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what Kobe Bryant thought about players' competitiveness today. What do you think about... Some of the some of the superstars nowadays is not being in the dunk. Cause you know, like you like us, oh, we grew up yeah. watching Jordan and Mike Dominique. Dominique. And we, the yeah. the yeah. greats was the ones yeah. that were putting on the show. And I'm yeah. not saying that I don't want to see some of these other boys. Cause nowadays some of these other boys got crazy hops too. But I'm yeah. saying like I would like to see our super superstars. If you one of those crazy athletes, 
Forget about all that, your brand, or I don't want to lose. Man, yeah. go put on a show. Like yeah. Aaron Gordon and Levine them did, like how MJ and Don. If you a superstar and you got bounced, go do it. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I think the All-Star game in general needs a little revamping because it used to be competitive. Yeah. It used to be competitive. And, like, you know, fans want to see the best pickup game in the world. Yeah. Like, that's what this is. They don't yeah. want to see you running up and down and dunking and doing all this crazy, like, they want to see the what happens when you get this collection of best basketball players on the planet and they play and they go head up against each other. Man. Yeah. I mean, you guys play harder at a pickup game in UCLA. For real. Yeah, and ain't do. billions of people watching. For real. Definitely do. You know what I'm saying? Definitely do. They uh, got turn the up. All-Star game needs a little needs a little changing. Um, I always love competing in them. Um, I didn't lose many of them. Nah, me and CP one, used to nah, talk all the time. The like, you took it serious. Yeah, yeah. We, we went. Like, I don't think me and CP, when we played together in the All-Star game, I don't think we've ever lost a game. Yeah. And we okay. used to look at each other and say, okay. Oh, serious. They go. don't want to play, we gonna yeah, play. Yeah, fourth quarter, let's go yeah. get them. Yeah. <laughs> so you heard what Kobe had to say. Now, one of the things that people have been pushing, like Gilbert Arenas and others, is that this is the most skill error ever. But it turns out Kobe Bryant didn't believe that. As a matter of fact, Kobe Bryant believed that this particular error lacked all of the fundamentals necessary to even be a skilled player. And he broke it down. He said, no, these, th th this is not the most skilled era. And we're actually witnessing a regression in the NBA today. And he was actually questioned about this during, I, I believe, one of his camps or maybe post game. And they were asking him to expand on his on his position about how players today are not being taught the fundamentals of the game. And he's and he was actually predicting the downfall. And we actually saw the downfall take place in the last FIBA games where this current crop of NBA players could not adjust to the international game however you have players who play internationally that come into the nba and totally dominate i.e luka Doncic, nikola Jokic, and others so for those of you who didn't hear what kobe bryant had to say there want to play what he had to say for you now and then want to continue on with the show take a listen to what kobe had to say there well it gave me the foundation so i was very fortunate to have great coaches that taught me the game at the most fundamental level so that means footwork the importance of passing with your left hand it's equally as you do with your right uh, moving off the ball, being able to set proper screens, uh, how to how to defend properly off the ball and on the ball. So all the fundamentals, the basics. Like we were lucky if we ever scrimmaged once in an entire week, because everything was just drills. So that time was the first time for you to actually know about global basketball. Is that something like different than you thought? If you've got to pick one word to describe the global basketball you first see, which word would you pick? Uh, one word to describe global basketball? At the age of six. At the age of six. Um, I would have said something like Magic, Michael, and Larry. <laughs> that's how I would have described Because to me, you know, that's what the NBA was. I didn't know it. Like, I knew what Italian basketball was. I knew what European basketball was. I knew it like the back of my hand. The NBA was still kind of a mystery. Um, you know, you couldn't just turn on a TV and see an NBA game. That wasn't happening. Um, so that was much a much bigger mystery to me than, you know, Italian basketball. Well, let's talk about your national career. And actually, I think you were summoned by Team USA earlier in 2000, but it was like seven years later when you first played the game representing Team USA. So how does it feel to finally put on that jersey and represent your own country? It, it, felt, it, felt, it felt great to put on the jersey because it means so much more um, than playing for your team. When we lost in 2004, um, you know, it was a heavy blow for us. You know, this is a sport that we've dominated for years. And I think you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of beauty in the fact that we lost because it means that the game is growing so much and there's so many countries out there that are playing and playing at a high level. But at the same time, it was like, okay, all right, that's beautiful. But now we want it back. <laughs> we want it back. And so 2008 was about that. It was about kind of reclaiming you know, what we feel we started. So you heard what he had to say. Now, recently, Gilbert Arenas put out a show where he says something that I I said, there's no way I'm going to produce a show to respond to what Gilbert had to. There's just no way I'm going to. Because it sounded so bad that I, I was like, there's no way we can actually touch this show. But I'm going to touch on his comments a little bit uh, because it's kind of related to what Kobe Bryant said in this ESPN article back in 2018 that I want to get into, where essentially they were talking about how defense has been ruined. 
and Gilbert Arenas said the reason that the game has been ruined is because they no, if they want to improve the defense, they need to make it better. Uh, no, no, they need to basically deport all of the European players back to their countries and you will see an improvement in the defense. First of all, I don't think we need to go any further than to say that those comments sounded extremely, extremely xenophobic. Like, if no one is going to say it, I'm going to say it. That was not a polite thing to say. It really wasn't. Number two, it looks very weak. Because it's like, we can't beat these guys, so let's get rid of them. It's a very, very, very weak thing to say in my personal view. And it's very wrong. And let's be honest, as black people, we got to stop the bull. We got to stop the bull. If this was a white league... And we had a white former NBA player talking about foreign black players, African players, African, whatever the hell you want to call them. And they're playing in the league and they're talking about how do we improve such and such in the league? And they say we need to get rid of all of the blacks and Africans. You MFers will be standing up hollering and screaming and screaming racism and screaming this and screaming prejudice and screaming all of that and screaming all of that. But in this particular moment, y'all were laughing. Y'all was looking like bozos for that, for laughing at that. You was looking like a super clown for doing that. You cannot be talking about, oh, I'm oppressed and racism, this and this and this. But it only you only understand it when it comes to you. If you're truly against racism and xenophobia and all of that crazy stuff, be against it across the board. Otherwise, shut the hell up. I'm sorry. That was a very, 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 very bad thing to say. I'm just keeping it real. Had the tables been turned, and I'm saying this as a black person, you want to judge me and say I don't get I don't give a F about what you think. No, no other black person defines me and gives me the rule book on how to be black. I'm calling it down the line. That was ignorant. But I want to read from an article that Kobe Bryant said, uh, where he talked about the lack uh, uh, talked about why European players are more skilled than players uh, today. So let me just read a little bit of it here. Kobe Bryant believes European basketball players are more skillful than American basketball players and says it's a growing trend that can be blamed on the greed of coaching at the AAU level. I think that European players are just way more skillful. Bryant said Friday night after the Los Angeles Lakers 103, I mean 109-106 loss to the Memphis Grizzlies. They're just taught the game the right way at an early age. They're more skillful. It's something we really have to fix. We really have to address that. We have to teach our kids to play the right way. Bryant was quick to point a finger at the decline of skilled players in the United States. Um, he then spoke about AAU. Bryant said, horrible, terrible AAU. It's stupid. And it doesn't teach our kids how to play the game the right way. The article then continues on. Bryant was born in Philadelphia, but when he was six, his father, former NBA player Joe Bryant, moved the family to Italy to continue his playing, his playing career. Kobe spent his childhood in Europe uh, until Joe retired in 1991 and move the family back to the United States. When you have limitations and you understand your limitations and you stay within yourself, you can be great, Kobe Bryant said. You know what you can do and what you can't do. In America, it's a big problem for us because we're not teaching players how to play all around basketball. That's why you have Powell and Mark Gasol, and that's the reason why 90% of the Spurs roster is European players because they have more skill. Brian smiled when asked what type of player he would have become if his family never moved to Italy and hadn't learned how to play the game in Europe. Horrible. Oh, no, excuse me. He says, I probably wouldn't be able to dribble with my left hand and shoot with my left hand and have good footwork, Brian said. I was kind of fortunate because I was growing up in Italy. The Red Arbacks, the Tex winners, and all the great coaches were doing clinics uh, clinics and camps in Europe. They were teaching all the club coaches and the club coaches were following their advice and their fundamentals like the Bible. And they were teaching all of us kids that type of stuff. Me, Manu, all of all of these guys that grew up around that same time were a product of that. It's a big difference. Brian had a simple solution to the problem. Teach players the game at an early age and stop treating them like cash cows for everyone to profit, profit off of. He said, that's how you do it. You have to teach them the game, give them instruction. But Brian would hold his annual 
uh, summer basketball camp and was quick to point out that any solution involving changing the current AAU basketball won't happen overnight. That's that's a deep well because then you start cutting into people's pockets. Brian said people get really upset when you start cutting into their pockets because all they do is try to profit off these poor kids. There's no quick answer. So you heard what Kobe Bryant had to say. I, I don't think there's anything else I need to say. I think I've given you guys all the necessary uh, evidence of information that you need. LeBron fans, you guys that pr uh, propagated this, that we're done with the night. Y'all are weak for this. Y'all, y'all are y'all are weak for this. Y'all not even keeping the basketball now. Y'all, it, it's so it's so embarrassing. Y'all are not even talking. Head up. Y'all not talking about the era and all of this. Like we gonna do this? Y'all want to bring up low lights? Like we we gonna do this? Is this what we gonna do? Like y'all y'all hit a whole new low with that one. I'm just keeping it funky. Y'all hit a whole new low. It's like, how low can you go? Y'all went real low. That was some clown stuff.